All right. Well, let me go ahead and uh, just real quick, I don't have many slides. Um, they just told me instead of AngularJS in 20-ish minutes, it now needs to be in 5-ish minutes. So shouldn't be a problem. I, I think we can do that. So uh, my name is Dan Walleen, and uh, I am a big fan of Angular, have been for a long time now. And when it came out, I kind of struggled with understanding how all the pieces fit together. And uh, I do a lot of videos for various companies, uh, Pluralsight's one of them, it's very cool to work with. And uh, I had given a conference talk, and uh, I didn't have time to do a whole course. There was already one from actually Joe and Jim. They did a whole course on this. And I said, well, maybe I'll convert my conference talk, and you know, maybe I'll get five people to watch it. Uh, and it's called AngularJS in 60-ish minutes. It actually ended up being 71 minutes. Um, this is why I added the ish. I doubt anyone in here has seen it, but if you have, uh, it was fun, and uh, it's had a lot of good uh, learning, I hope, for some of you. And when we originally talked, I think it was Dave actually switched this on me. He came in and said, uh, can you do AngularJS in the 60th minutes for the conference? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. We can do that. That'd be fun. Um, I get to present at a lot of conferences, and I thought that'd be a good opportunity. And then I got an email and said, could you do it in 20-ish minutes? And I was like, ah, OK. So I'm going to jump right in here. Um, I blog a lot about Angular and a variety of other topics. I use a lot of technologies. Uh, I run a company based in Phoenix, Arizona. So uh, it's a little bit, yeah, there we go. Uh, I've been complaining about the cold, I will admit. I, I got one guy saying, what are you talking about, cold? It's going to be like 40 today. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I was just in L.A. yesterday, actually, and I was on the beach. And uh, yeah, it was a little rough. But anyway. What I'm going to do real quick, and I, I probably took the idiotic approach, is I'm going to try to build a very simple example that highlights the key pieces that, well, I wish I would have known when I first learned Angular, and then uh, kind of build it out from scratch. So I'm gonna, with that, we're going to jump out to Sublime here and jump right in. So the agenda is I want to just talk briefly about, and specifically I'm going to talk to those of you that maybe you've, you know, you've heard about Angular, you might have played with it some, but you're not really sure quite yet about how uh, all the pieces fit together. So the agenda is kind of shown right here. And uh, what I'm going to do is just walk through the basics. So first things first, I already have a couple scripts in here, one of which is AngularJS, you can see, and then there's a couple others we'll talk about. So for those of you that have done a lot with Angular, I guess you can tune me out for the next 15 minutes or so. Um, but I'm going to come in and add a directive called ng-app. And this will mark Angular as, this is an Angular app, and it's now going to be able to scan the document, do some compilation linking stuff, and look for other Angular things in the document. Um, that is like the number one easiest thing to forget, by the way. <laughs> you get right in your app, and then all of a sudden you're like, why isn't this stupid thing working? And it, come out, it comes out because you forgot to do something. Now, one of my favorite features uh, nowadays that's come out is the ability to do data binding. So I'm going to add another what we call directive. And you heard uh, Brad and Misko talk a little bit about directives. This is a built-in one that does data binding. And if you're new to data binding, all this does is marries the text box to this what's going to be a property called search text. So to kind of prove that this works, though, we need to be able to write out some data. And so now I'm going to do something called a data binding expression. And we're just going to write out search text. So we've told Angular this is an Angular app. We've now said I have some search text. And we're going to write out that search text. All right, so let's see what we have at this point. And you'll all need to help me out, because like I said, I took the idiotic approach with I'm going to do live coding. And that's generally a bad idea. But all right, hey, that one works. All right, that's all I got. Any questions? No. <laughs> all right, awesome. I mean, if it just did that alone, that's pretty cool. Because uh, let's, let's, let me remind you, I have yet to write a line of JavaScript code. So that's, that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's go on back here. And uh, let's come on down now. And I have some customers I'd like to write out. And obviously in a not responsive way, because I'm going to have some columnar data. So I'm a div fan, just as a heads up. I debated. I'm like, I know somebody's going to criticize that I used a table in a demo. So uh, what I'm going to do, though, is come in. And we're going to come up and do another directive called ng-init. And I'm going to make another property in memory now. Specifically, it goes into something called a root scope. We'll get into scope a little bit here in a bit. And I'm just going to add Ted, Tim, uh, 
Make sure I type this right. You guys are in charge. If, I, if this demo fails, it's your fault. <laughs> All right. I think we got it right. So Ted, Tim, Michelle, Zed, whatever. And what I'd like to do is write those values out um, and generate multiple rows. So we should get four rows. So I'm going to come into my TR and do ng repeat. Now again, those that have done Angular a lot, this is very primitive to you guys and you know what you're doing here. But for those that haven't, we now have a little template. And this is going to iterate through my customer's data and write out the values. So we're going to come in and say for each cust in customers, Let's go ahead and write out, we're going to use a data binding expression again, the customer. All right, so this should write out the Ted, Tim, Michelle, and uh, Zed here. All right, anybody see any typos yet? I'm telling you, it's your fault if it doesn't work. All right, woo, all right, two demos that worked in a row. Very basic. You have to write a line of JavaScript, really, though, right? And that's what I love about Angular. Um, actually, the number one thing I love about Angular is that you get one just awesome framework instead of having to have, you know, 20 scripts uh, in your app. You can have one really solid core, and then, of course, you can augment that with others. Okay, now that's cool and all, too, um, but it'd be kind of cool if we could come in and maybe uh, order the data. In fact, let's switch around Ted and Zed here. And it'd also be cool if we could filter. So what I'm going to do is do a little piping, and I'm going to pipe our customers into a filter first off. And the filter needs some, what are we going to filter on? Well, we already set up some search text here. So how about we take that text, and as they type, we can then filter it out. So we're going to filter by search text. So let's come on in. We'll go on back here. And uh, let's type Ted. And notice a T, T-E. All right, and this is where when I first started learning Angular, I started going, wow, this is actually really freaking cool. Like I've yet to write a line of JavaScript code. Um, all right, so let's keep going. Then the next thing though is, you know, a lot of you I know love to hard code your data like this, right? <laughs> Maybe not. So what I'm gonna do next is let's take it up a notch. And now we're gonna get, so we've kind of done a little bit on data binding and filters and there's an order by I have, I'll, I don't think I'll have time, but we'll try to get to it. But let's do modules and controllers real fast. So let me uh, give a little space for the back row here. And let's come on in and make uh, what we call a module. So I'm gonna say angular.module and I'm gonna give it the name of customers app. All right, and I'll talk about what this is really quickly. So a module really is just a container. Um, I kind of think of it like a, a package, a, a namespace. Uh, it's, a, it's kind of a logical naming container uh, that you can reference and use. This square brackets, for those that are new to this, is basically saying I don't depend on any other modules. Right now I'm kind of, uh, this app is so sophisticated, I don't need anything else, right? So what I can do with the module on its own is, well, not that much. But what I can do with it, if I use a little more code, is I can make things like controllers. So let's make oop, customer's controller. And let's uh, talk a little bit about scope real quick. All right, so one of the cool things, and by the way, if you're wondering, no, I don't put all my JavaScript in the main page. But for a uh, quick 20 minute demo, this is going to have to suffice. Um, in this case, we now have a customer's controller. And you'll see this little dollar scope. Now again, the Angular gurus in here already know what this is, so you can correct me if I get it wrong. But in essence, this is a place where we can put our data. Um, it's a view model. Uh, so we have our view, which is our UI, and I need to stick some data into that view. And the scope is going to hold the data members. So I have a little bit of code here I'm going to grab and paste in. All right, and now we have scope dot customers, and now we have a little more realistic data, still hard-coded, but at least it's a little more, it's not just string. So what I need to do now is I have a module that Angular needs to know about. Um, they haven't got that mind reading thing down yet. I'm hoping, I heard that's like a version four feature, but uh, not quite yet. So I'm gonna come up here and the name right here, customers app, in fact, I'm gonna copy that so I don't screw it up. We're gonna come in and give it that value. And the other thing I'm going to do is come in and say ng controller, another directive, because again, it knows about the module now, but it doesn't know to use the controller. There could be 50 controllers in there. So what we're going to do instead is tell it for now uh, that I want to use customer's controller, 
Hopefully there's no typos there. And now what's going to happen is because the ng app knows about the container, it can now look up the controller and bind it into this particular uh, piece of HTML, my view. Now this is truly a single page application. <laughs> we have one page. But uh, we'll hopefully uh, do a little bit more here in just a sec. All right, anybody see any typos there? We good for the Angular gurus in here? Let's try it. All right, it worked. Now, I think this is how UI should be. If we could just get users to like JSON and, and object literal, <laughs> it would really simplify life, right? But obviously, that's not going to fly. So uh, we'll come on in. And now I'm going to loop through my customers. But now I have name and ID and total. So let's go ahead and just do a couple uh, quick things here real quick. So we'll do uh, name. And let's come right here and do cus.total. But if we just do total, you'll notice I kind of purposely made some not real realistic money numbers, but we want to format that as a currency. So this filter that I did earlier, there's other types of filters or formatters, you might even call them, that we can do. So I can come in and pipe the value through one that's built in called currency. All right, so let's go ahead and do that guy. And ooh, ah, wow. You know, it just automatically does it. Now we can still uh, filter our data. We still get all those benefits. All right, very cool. And let's you know, keep in mind I've written like 43 to 52, uh, 9 to 11 lines of code, something like that. So um, now we have a controller. But a controller, eh, we need a little bit more. So the next thing we're going to do is I have a script called a Angular route. Now, right now, as I mentioned, this is a true single page app. But in a true single page app, you, of course, have multiple views that want to load. So that's going to get us into using routing. So I'm going to include something. We're going to call this ng route. And this is another module that Angular, starting with 1.2, uh, has already included in the framework. And this allows us to do the routing uh, functionality. So let me go ahead and uh, do this really quick here. In fact, you know what? How much? Oh, yeah, we're running low on time here. So good thing for snippets. All right, just in case I was running a little behind, which I now am, um, we're going to paste in a snippet here. I know you all like to watch me type and go, man, I hope he screws that up. It'd be so fun. But uh, I'm going to take this out for now. We haven't covered that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more controller, because then we'll talk about this. So you guys have already seen controllers, though. Let's do orders controller. And we're not going to really do much with this. We're going to pass in the scope. And this is using something called dependency injection. Angular, when it sees the dollar scope, I didn't mention this earlier, will automatically pass that in for us, which is a very cool feature of the, the framework. And now what I can do is I'm just going to say scope.customerID equals, I'm going to hard code something for now. Okay, so now I have uh, two controllers. So this ng route functionality, what it does is allows us to uh, use a route provider. And what the route provider does is allows us to marry a view with a controller. Now you can see I have a path in here for uh, app slash views, and it shouldn't matter in this app, but I'm going to go from the root anyway. And I'm going to go to Customer's Controller. I'm going to go to Order's Controller. When they go to the default uh, route, the slash, the root, I'm going to go in and load the customers. When they go into the orders, I'm going to load a different one. Now, where are these? Well, these are over in a little Views folder over here. Okay, So I have this app views. This is going to start to build out my single page application. So first thing I'm going to do is basically delete everything that we have to move whatever that is out of here. And if I'm going to load customers' views and orders' views into an area, I need a place to load that. So I need a little X marks the spot. And so what I'm going to do is come in and say ng view. This is another directive. So we've seen ng repeat, ng view, ng app, ng init. These are all directives. They teach HTML new tricks. So the ng view now will be responsible for having the customers or the orders loaded basically into that div. I just put it on up there. And so now that I have ng route, it should know about it. We now have our code here that tells the path and the controllers and things. And then we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and refresh this. All right, that's good. It loaded. Now, you'll notice this is a little bit different, though. Kind of zoom in a little bit. We have uh, links here. 
Okay, I didn't add that in previous, but imagine a link that went to orders. So now we have a very simple single page application. All right, pretty cool though, for not doing much code. So the final thing I'm gonna do to wrap up is uh, something called a factory. And we're gonna make a little Ajax call. So I have a little node server running behind the scenes here. Very simple. And so let me go grab a, a snippet because I'm definitely not gonna have time to type all this. Paste this in. All right, eh, good enough. So we are gonna make something called a factory. Now there's kind of three general main concepts you could use here to do reusable functionality. Uh, really what we're talking about here is a singleton, single instance in memory. And so like Ajax calls, I like to put in factories. Uh, things like uh, business rules that you're reusing across controllers, really anything you wanna reuse across something is a great candidate for either a factory, a service, or a provider. And I won't have time to go into what those are, but I'm sure some of the other talks will cover that. So what this one does is you'll notice we don't have scope here, we have HTTP. This is our little Ajax guy. So for everybody that's done jQuery in here, uh, which is probably a lot of you, then this is kind of like doing a uh, get JSON uh, call in jQuery. All right, it's gonna be passed in automatically. I'm gonna create this factory object, say that we have a get customers, and then we're gonna return the uh, promise from this Ajax call. So this is gonna call up and just get some kind of hard-coded JSON in this example, and then we return the factory. Now there's only gonna be one factory by default. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is in here, I'm gonna initialize oop, uh, a little init here, and I'm just gonna call it. There's multiple ways you could do this, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna do this. And now we're gonna take this customer's factory and say that my controller needs it. So I'm gonna pass this in, and now we can call get customers, and then I can say if it's successful, and of course you would do errors, uh, something like that. Now I can come in and say scope.customers equals, and then I'm just gonna take the data here. So now when the init is called, when the constructor gets called based on the routing, that's gonna call into my factory. The factory makes the AJS call, returns the promise, and then we're gonna resolve that promise here or handle the promise, I should say, and we'll uh, deal with it. All right, so if we refresh it, all right, now that's live data from a server that is on my little laptop. <laughs> Not very impressive, but you can see it works. All right, so I'm out of time. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you, and I'd highly recommend check out their talk, is uh, Matthias and Lucas are gonna do some really cool stuff. So I'm gonna steal all their thunder here. <laughs> And the, rat, the final thing I'm gonna show you is a slide animation. Now notice all I did was add a class. Now this won't work right now, and I almost forgot actually. There's one more module called ng, uh, I think it's ng Matthias, is that, is that what it is? No. <laughs> ng uh, animate, did I get that right Matthias? It's kinda cool when you have the guy that wrote it like right on the front row here. <laughs> um, you know, no pressure at all. And uh, let me make sure it's cutting off my screen. I, th I think I got that right. All right, I think it's right. Anyway, if not, you can go see their talk. Um, and now what should do, oh yeah. Oh, and I don't have time for the repeat animation, but if I did, I, you know, you guys would all be like, oh, let's just go home. This is just too good. <laughs> so we, we won't do that one, but. All right, so that's a wrap. That's all I have time. I'm uh, all wrapped up. So the last thing I'm going to show you really quick here is a couple things, and we'll uh, give me like 20 seconds. We'll get out of here on my part of it anyway. So modules I mentioned are, are used for controllers and factories, but there's a lot of other things. You can create custom directives, uh, custom filters. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff, configure routes. And this is really where I started to learn how Angular worked was I, I imagine it's kind of a bunch of Lego blocks and you gotta figure out how the Lego blocks work together. So the final one I'll talk about here, if you're interested, I also have a Flipboard magazine. In fact, I've been trying for months, Brad and I, I don't know how many emails we've sent, to get Brad as a contributor and the stupid Flipboard thing won't add him. But anyway, there's been, uh, I don't know how many hundred articles there are, but if you're interested, uh, you can head off to my blog to get to it and then I also do a uh, newsletter as well. There's a bunch of these going around lately. Uh, that you can get to. So a lot of info on this. Uh, check out the AngularJS in 60-ish minutes if you want more time on YouTube. And if you're on Twitter, feel free to hook up there. Thanks a lot, guys. It's been fun. Thank you.